Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's hands-on tutorial, I will show you how to download Quantum Espresso and how to find useful information about Quantum Espresso. So let's start. If you go to Google and uh, search Quantum Espresso, and you will find the first result is the official website. And there are tons of information in it. Uh, and the most important three are download and, and the documentation, the resources and the pseudo potentials. I will start with the download. If you click here, uh, there are two options. You can go either go here and, and go uh, or go here. It's the same. It, it redirects you to GitHub. And uh, this is the uh, most recent version of Quantum Espresso 6.4.1. If you scroll down, you will see in the assets, you will see source code .tar.gz. Yeah? Uh, I, I recommend you to download this one and if you click on it, it will start downloading. Yeah? Um, and and this, is the, this is the program. And uh, if you scroll down uh, further, this is the older version and an even older version, 6.3, and uh, may maybe even older. Uh, my feeling is that it's more or less the same. There, there is not much change, at least you will not feel it in this tutorial. So it's fine that if, if you use 6.2, 6.1, it would uh, um, you would also be able to follow the tu tutorial. It the same. Okay, so this is finished. Uh, and uh, in the next tutorial, I will tell you how to um, how to deal with this uh, this file. Okay. And the second thing is the re resources and documentation. Click here. Uh, there are basically two things. One is the input data description. One is the user manual, basically. Uh, there are different sub programs in Quantum Espresso. And uh, the most important one that we will use is pw.x. This runs the uh, self-consistency program of uh, of DFT, and uh, most of them requires some uh, some input file, uh, which is structured in a, in a special way, which I will also talk about in uh, later in the tutorial. Um, so if you click here, you see there are a lot of parameters. It is it is impossible to remember everything so so just feel free to refer to this page um, if you if you are constructing your own input file for example if you want to uh, define what is the dimension uh, what is the uh, dimension of uh, of your, your, your supercell what is the symmetry of the supercell what is the type of calculation uh, uh, so on so this is this is very useful, and I usually I also bookmark this so that I can ref uh, go back quickly. And the uh, second thing is the documentation. For example, the same uh, for the same sub program pw dot x, there is this PDF file that is kind of long, um, but. Um, Basically, it, it uh, describes every aspect, how to compile, how to use, uh, and how to Im improve the performances. If you have, uh, if you encounter any bug or you don't know what to do, I would uh, highly recommend that you uh, you come here and and see uh, whether there is already one solution in it. And uh, and apart from that, there is also this uh, tutorial here. Um, it is usually not so uh, complete, but uh, may maybe you can find some good ones. For example, this hands-on tutorial on Quantum Espresso. There are slides and exercises and theories, so yeah, f feel free to, to check. And another important thing uh, in, in DFT is uh, pseudo-potential. This allows you to do um, uh, something specific to, uh, to elements. So, for example, if you want to calculate something res with respect to uh, silicon, you would need to offer a quantum espresso with the pseudo potential file for silicon. If you click here, you will find a lot of choices of um, pseudo potential files. Um, usually, I find that uh, they, they are more or less similar. Uh, they offer similar performance, they give similar result, but I would also recommend that uh, you can you try different things to, um, to make sure that your, uh, your uh, 
result is consistent. And uh, later I will also sh uh, explain what, what those things mean. What is PBE, what is this uh, PAW, and what is PSL. Yeah. And uh, this PS library and all of, th all of the things listed here are the default uh, pseudo-potential library for quantum espresso. Um, you can also find some v uh, some good uh, external pseudo-potential libraries that is listed on the left-hand side. I've tried different things, they work more or less similarly. Uh, for example, the pseudo-dojo and ONCV. Um, and, uh, and what I would recommend is this one, this SSSP, because this is uh, well documented, this is well maintained, this is also okay, uh, well characterized. You see that um, it is characterized for uh, all of the elements. So I would highly recommend you this one. And there are two versions of SSSP library. One is efficiency, one is precision. And for efficiency, uh, it means that um, it runs a little bit faster, but um, but the result is not as precise. And for the SSP precision, the result is better, but the, but it may run a little bit slower. In practice, I never uh, I never see any difference between the speed. So I always choose this SSP uh, precision. So just click on it, and um, and just just download it here. Pseudo potentials and go to download yeah and then you see that it starts downloading and it's not a big file but the uh, extension is it's also .tar.gz so basically .tar.gz is the is the same thing as uh, the zip file in windows it's just that this is uh, in in linux so i will also uh, show you guys later how to how to use the pseudo potentials how to choose pseudo potentials and uh, the last thing that um, that is also your your good friend is Google. If uh, if you uh, encounter some uh, some some problem, some bug, you can always search on Google. Maybe there is uh, there is already some solution. There is already someone asking for it. Um, yeah. Okay. So this is today's tutorial. Hope you already learned something, and uh, I will see you next time.